Hey folks, Tim Miller here, and uh, I wanted to jump on and do a live. It's been quite a while since I have, and um, I know many of you out there have been saying, hey, where you been? Um, honestly, we've been just overwhelmed uh, trying to train organizations and and help organizations, and um, it's a def definitely a very different uh, kind of time. And so I wanted to jump on here tonight and, you know, just kind of talk about something that's really been on my heart. Um, as you look at kind of what's going on um, in our country, it, it really is amazing how fast things are changing. And uh, I, I, I really hope and pray that um, we're able to uh, kind of talk about some things tonight. I know many of you have said, um, hey, we would love to, you know, be able to ask you some questions and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure. I'm trying a new platform. So I'm not sure if um, anybody is with me. Uh, I hope you are. But uh, if you are, if you just let me know, um, because I think right now it is, um, it, it's an interesting season. Um, you know, in terms of our country. And uh, I, I did want to kind of just to kind of bring something different, a little bit different to the table. Um, I, I did want to, um, I did want to just kind of talk about um, some things. Um, Devin, it's good to see you. Thank you for jumping in. I did want to, you know, kind of talk a little bit about something that really struck my attention. And for those of you who have um, not seen this or maybe not seen it in a while, I, I just really wanted to share this because I thought, wow, how prophetic it was. As we look at America today, as we look at um, kind of how things are changing, developing, um, almost faster than we can keep, keep up with it. Um, you know, it, it, it struck me that, uh, for many of you, I was talking, Hey Matt, good to see you. I was talking to my buddy, Matt Pasqualini and he, we were talking about, you know, when we were raised, there was a guy by the name of Paul Harvey. And, um, I wanted to pray, play something that Paul Harvey played in 1968, and I want to spend just a couple minutes digesting the wisdom of what he said, because I want you to think for a minute about what our country was like in 1968. It was a very different country. Nobody locked their doors. Um, it, it, it literally was relatively safe to walk down the streets. Um, you know, we were starting to see drugs, but nothing that, you know, kind of overwhelmed us. And so Paul Harvey had this to say, and, and I wanted to share this. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing, I'd have judges promoting pornography, 
Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. Listen to that. It's been a while. It brought home to me how amazingly different our country is. And I know I'm talking to many that understand um, what it was like in in America to grow up uh, where you played outside until dark. You um, came in when it was time to eat. You never thought about walking down the street. Uh, I'm not saying it was perfect. We had crime. We had all those things, but it wasn't like it was today. And it's interesting how Paul Harvey just absolutely crushed it when he talked about the agenda and some of the things that, you know, I, he, if I were the devil, I would want to destroy the church. I'd want to get the church fighting, not preaching things that are helpful. I'd want to lie to young people. Boy, I'd want to make them believe lies. I would want to have TV become more and more raunchy and destructive. I would want to have um, families at war, churches at war, nations at war. I would want to have judges compromised. I don't know about you, but when I think about this, it it's like amazing how quickly our nation has changed and how many of these things prophetically, how could Paul Harvey have known in 1968 what was coming? But I think that goes to, we've been warned. Um, we're in a very different country today. We're in a country, if you look across um, our law enforcement communities, um, the FBI, the Secret Service, uh, IRS, you're, you're, you're seeing major compromises in integrity. And um, it has. It's been a long, slow slide. But I guess what I would say to you, and the reason I wanted to jump on tonight is, you know, it's time. I, I can remember stories as a Marine of uh, Marine Corps is really good at going back into history and detailing that, you know, as Marines, we stood on the shoulders of other Marines who had fought and sometimes died to make sure America was free because make no bones about it. Um, Hitler and Germany and, and Japan, they were dead set on destroying America. And, but there were Americans that loved our freedom. There were Americans that absolutely were willing to stand. And, and I agree, you know, man, it, it's never too late for us to stand. And, and a lot of people, you know, I talk about how to be safe and secure, but, but I have to tell you folks, um, what's resonating with me now is, is prayer and action. Man, we need to start standing at school board meetings. We need to start reaching out to our elected officials. We need to start emailing people. We need to start voting. Man, every person that's listening should be voting. Um, at, at this point, you and I, at least so far, I'm, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to occur, but our vote matters. And I'm amazed at how many people do not exercise the constitutional responsibility to vote. Folks, by the way, I, you know, I've lost friends. I've lost, thank you. I appreciate that, Matt. Um, I've lost friends paying the price for freedom. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, 
all I can say to all of us on this channel is, is, is you know, it's, it, it, it's the symbol of a light. You know, when you walk into a dark, dark, dark room and there's just a little bit of light, it lights up. But when two or three and four and five and 10 and 20 and hundreds of people start entering that dark room, pretty soon it's not dark anymore. And that's one of the things that Paul Harvey talked about that really struck with me. You know, darkness is encroaching in every area. Darkness, pure evil. When you look at October 7th and when you look at what's going on across uh, the world, the, the, the butchering of Christians worldwide, I don't think a lot of folks understand that. But, but even what's going on in our country for people that are absolutely being victimized and targeted and that's just pure evil, folks. Just, you know, Matt and I were talking earlier today about a young woman and her husband out on a date attacked and 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 beaten by a bunch of thugs. And, and she was pregnant and kicked in the stomach and lost a child. Folks, that ought to, for all of us, that ought to raise us up and say, hey, it's time to do something. And I know if, if you're out there like me, the question is what? Well, the what's pretty clear. The question is, are we willing to do it? Are we willing to get engaged in school board meetings? Yeah, but I'm an older person. I don't need to. No, you still, if you care about young people, we need to be making our, our, our voices very loud and clear um, that we, we're going to stand for for righteousness. We, we're going to stand for light. And, and you hear me a lot talking about how you prepare in advance for a conflict. Why? Because I want you to be safe. I want you to be healthy. I want your families to be healthy. But folks, we got to step up and raise up to stand for our country because our country right now is in serious trouble. And we need to recognize that not through the lens of fear, but through the lens of, hey, I got to get off my couch. I've got to do something. And for some of you, you may say, well, I'm not in good health. Can you vote? Can you attend a school board meeting? Can you reach out to your elected officials and say, hey, this is not cool what we're doing? And I know for some in, in, in some of the more liberal states that you, uh, it doesn't matter. No, it matters. It matters. Folks, I'm telling you, there's an awakening in America right now. People are starting to figure out that all this stuff that's been told to us, it's not working out. And, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I did a, a video on, on the threat on, of terrorism. It is um, scary, the threat that's come across our border. I can't understand why our leaders would let it happen. I mean, you're emptying jails in Venezuela, you're emptying mental asylums in Nicaragua, you're sending everybody north, and what do you think they're going to do when they get here? And that's just the criminal side. What about those that have been trained to hate us on the battlefield in Syria and in Afghanistan? And... I think I think you're right. I, I think um, miracle. The next election is the most um, crazy thing that we're going to see. I think it's the most important election in the history of our country. Um, I'm shocked, like you are. I, I'm looking kind of across all the different organizations, the key things in our country that make us who we are: the judicial systems, the law enforcement systems, and and you know you're you're just seeing the most important thing kind of slip and that's integrity now thank god you and i know there are lots of folks lots of folks who love our country i think they're more than not that love our freedom love our country love our constitution love our way of life and are willing to stand because folks i got to tell you that now is the time to stand. Okay, Tim, I get it. What do I do? Well, some of the things we do are what we've talked about. You have to vote. But let me challenge you just from a personal standpoint. Stand up for what you believe in. You know, it's amazing to me how evil is not shy in terms of forcing down your throat and my throat, their views, their perspectives. And I thank God I fought for freedom to speak. But folks, that doesn't mean freedom to intimidate. And I think as you think through this next generation, 
Uh, I want you to think about your kids, grandkids, if, if you're older like I am. If you're a young person, I, man, I want to ask you a question. What kind of country do you want to live in? Because you've been told lies. You've been told in college campuses that socialism is a great way of life. The problem with that is it's a total lie. Socialism is all about power and control over people. Where their socialism, freedoms go away. If you don't believe me, do some research on your own. But the reality is our country still is the greatest place to live on the earth. That's why everybody wants to wants to to you know to be here but you know one of the things and matt that's a great point i i really i think it's time for the older people uh, to get engaged you know some of you have resources some of you have a lot of experience we need to get engaged we need to get engaged in mobilizing our young people hey don't be afraid to have the hard conversations with your kids folks with your grandkids when they start coming up with this stuff Challenge them, do it with love, but challenge them to really think about what they're saying. Do you really want the government in control over everything? Do you really want the government to pay for everything? Do you really want the government dictating to you everything? You see, our founding fathers, they didn't want that, and I don't want that, and you don't want that. I want to be able to live my life freely. And I got to tell you, looking at what Paul Harvey said today uh, really got my attention because it was a great reminder that if we, you know, there's an old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. And I think we've been taught political correctness, cancel culture. We've been taught not to speak anything that would offend somebody. And on the other side, they don't mind speaking things that offend everybody. And uh, I, I just think, folks, this year... 2024, this election is going to throw things at us we've never seen in the history of our country. And I think it's really important that that we get engaged. We as people that love our country, love our God, love the values that we've had. You know, it was funny. I was talking uh, for many of you, you, you know, I went on to Jesse Waters. We were talking about the scandal of, of the Secret Service and how uh, a group of Secret Service agents came forward. I, I want to say it was in the 30s, 38 or 39. And they said, hey, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. All this stuff to hire different types of people has translated to we're not hiring qualified people. In other words, they're having a, a huge challenge performing their mission. Now, now, folks, I understood when I stood next to the president of the United States that I had to be willing to die for him, but I also had to be willing to be very skilled, to train, to work, to sweat. Because I believed in protecting the leader, whichever party of the free world. Folks, when we start seeing premier agencies like the Secret Service and like the FBI, and, and now, unfortunately, because of the defund movement, um, many police agencies, they're not able to hire qualified people. And, and now they're hiring people that are less than qualified. And believe it or not, I think in the state of Illinois, they're talking about hiring people that aren't even citizens. I want you to think about that. So you come virtually unvetted from another country, and now you're going to enforce the laws of the United States based on the fact that you support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So you can see it is a very, very troubling time to to be engaged. And, and I think we're really at a point now, folks, where it, if nothing else from this, this chat we're having tonight, I, I would really challenge you to ask yourself one question. Well, actually two. What can I do? What can I do? Not what can't you do? What can I do? And am I willing to do it? Because, you know, my father often reminded me, he was a World War II veteran, and he often reminded me, he had been in the South Pacific, he'd been in, in occupied Italy after the war, and he'd seen what evil does when it's unchecked. And he kept saying time and time again to me, never forget the price of freedom, because I can see their faces. He knew who had paid the ultimate sacrifice. He watched his friends die. But you know what? He told me I wouldn't change a thing 
because I get to live in the United States of America. And so I, I want to be clear that I'm not advocating all that the United States is doing. Boy, do I disagree. I know you do too with an awful lot of the choices we're making now as a government, awful lot. But I still believe our country is, um, is worth fighting for. Our country's worth standing for. And I think Paul Harvey saw it in 1968 that, wow, if we're not careful, we will slip down the scale into the abyss. And, um, and that's not where we all want to be. And so, folks, I, you know, I just really uh, happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, I, I know we always talk, you know, um, the, the first thing we can do is pray. And um, by the way, Miracle, it's good to see you. Thanks for jumping on the channel. And uh, I love Ag Supply. You guys are awesome. So thank you for, for, for jumping in. Um, and, and I think, you know, as you look at the challenges in front of us, let me just encourage you to do a couple of things. And, and that's get engaged um, in the political process because that will determine what policies are ahead for us. Uh, whatever you believe in, whatever you believe is right, um, get engaged and support it. Um, the other thing is, um, if you believe in something principally, don't be intimidated to speak about it. Use your voice to be a voice of reason and positivity, because I know right now, folks, a lot of folks that I know are intimidated. Well, we don't want to be canceled. We don't want to be this. We don't want to Hey, You know what? I, I think we all would agree. There are just certain things worth standing for at any cost. And I think we're really at, at, at a point in our country's history where if we don't stand, and I know you're hearing this warning from me over and over, if we don't stand, I'm not sure where we're going to be even a year from now because things are changing so quickly. And folks, we have millions of people coming across the border millions people we don't know um we do know based on you know the video i just did that you know at least eight terrorists isis terrorists just a refresher isis were the ones that were beheading christians in syria they're the most radical of the radical al-qaeda is not as radical as ISIS, and we arrested eight of them three days ago. We arrested yesterday a, a an extremist in New York who had NYPD paraphernalia, had a subway vest, had all kinds of uh, different weapons, um, had espoused on his on his channel that uh, he was in you know total support of uh, radical Islam and had written his apology letter, which, folks, that translates to he was fully intending on dying while killing innocent people. And so it's no more um, that we can look at this and go, oh, you know, it's not a big deal. And, and, and I get, you know, I get the haters and, oh, you're an alarmist, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you this. I would much rather work hard to be prepared and not need it than to do nothing. And I had a, I had a, a comment today, you know, I just turned the news off. Well, that's great. It's kind of like if you live in South Florida where we live and a cat five's coming. You can turn the news off, but that doesn't mean that cat five's not coming ashore. So I hope and pray for all of us that we're prepared. Let me give you a, just a couple things real quick. Um, it, you know, it, you, you got to prepare for your survivability. And, and, and that means that, you know, there are a lot of things that can happen this year. Uh, weather's certainly one of them. But you look at uh, attacks against critical infrastructure, power, water, all those kinds of things. I always recommend you need to have three to six months worth of food. Um, available. Uh, I go to Patriot Food or Wise Food because you can store it 30 years. As long as it's in a, a um, you know, a cool place, it'll last forever. So now you got food cover, water. 
uh, there are filtration systems. If you can get to a water source, they even have straws that you can, you know, drink directly out. I don't recommend it, but there's filtration um, devices. Just go Google it. Um, but you need to have water. And then, folks, you, you really need to look at your home security. You need to look at, you know, if I had to, you know, if there were problems going on and I had to lock down my home, would it be easy to break into my home? I encourage everybody, walk around your home like you were the person that was going to attack it because you're going to see the weak points. And here, here's what we need to do. Where there are weak points, make them strong. Uh, I've talked often on this channel about uh, front doors. They're easy to kick in. There are secondary locking devices. Matt and I were talking earlier. You, there are poles you can make. You can put it against the door uh, that's fit to where you can't kick that door in. I always recommend going deeper into the door frame with, with longer screws and then make sure your bolt itself is extended out. Many contractor bolts are only this long. So when you kick the door, you can come right in. Look at your windows. Do you have windows that are easily broken? Um, if you do, then look at there's protective film. There's all those kinds of things. Um, remember that situational awareness at home is just huge. So there are things like ring cameras. Um, there are all kinds of things you want to be able to see out and you want to have some level of motion lighting out that lights up what's going on so that you can see. Now, remember that if you lose power, all those things go away. So what's your plan now? And those are the kinds of things for your home security you need to think about. You also need to have a plan for a fire. Where do your kids go? How do you get them out? Do you know that in smoke, you lose your ability to think in about a minute to a minute and a half because the smoke begins to affect your cognitive ability to think. So you need to get the cleanest air is 18 inches from the ground. You need to get there. You need to get to the door, but your family needs to have a plan. Hey, if it ever happens and you jump out the window, we're all going to meet at the mailbox. Um, so you, you, you need to think through things like that. And you also need to think through what do we do if there's a home uh, invasion? in our house? How do we protect our children? Um, unfortunately, you know, there are a lot of folks that say, well, I have a weapon, so I'm good. I will tell you, just because you're, you have a weapon does not mean you're good. You need to be trained with that weapon. You know, Lionheart trains. We do a lot of training. We've got three classes coming up in Okeechobee, Florida. But what we've learned training people is that they think it's all about how to shoot, and that's certainly important, how to shoot, but it's way more important to learn when to shoot. We call that judgmental shooting, and so those are skills that you can't wait until someone's breaking into your house to have, you know, and then you get into what kind of gun, where should I carry it, all those things. So those are things that we really need, um, you know, to, to focus on how um, we're going to plan and prepare uh, folks that can change quickly in this country. If uh, I heard a, a friend of mine that I work with is still with a Department of Homeland Security. He said, we are three days away from empty shelves on a supermarket if the transportation industry was targeted and attacked. Now, I want you to think about that. What are all those people that live around you going to do if there's no food on the shelves? So those are things we don't like to think about, but we need to think about that. So we're going to protect our, uh, our our survivability. We're going to protect our home. And then, you know, folks, you've heard this so many times from me, but I just want to reiterate, now's a good time to start if you haven't. Think about how to protect your family when you're out and about. And we talk about situational awareness. I like, you know, Matt's, you know, spot on. You, you you need to be the head of security for your home. If you're a dad or a mom, you both may be in charge of saving your kids' lives. Make sure that you have the observational skills and the practical skills to save them in the event that there's a problem. Well, what kind of problem could there be? There could be a lot. That's why I always, when I'm training folks and organizations, I always uh, encourage people to ask the most important question that you can ask if you want to be safe. And that's, what would I do if? You see, we know based on research that 
um, you know, you're looking around, you're observant, but when you begin to engage scenarios, like you look at a person maybe off to the side standing there and he's not doing anything right now, but you do ask yourself, what would I do if he began to walk towards me? What would I do if he began to pull a weapon out? What would I do if, cause here's what we know. The brain is an amazing amazing computer. When you begin to do that, you play out scenarios in your mind and you begin to map solutions into your brain. Cops do this all the time. You're pulling into the 7-Eleven, you're expecting a robbery. Why is that? Because now you've created an emergency file and it's not paranoia. I want to be clear. It's preparation. When you go into a restaurant, you want to sit with your back against the wall. You want to pay attention to, you know, who's coming in and who's coming out. I recently heard a YouTube expert, and I'll use that term lightly. He, he was basically mocking um, situational awareness as the most important thing. And, and you know, I, I kind of find that humorous because <laughs> certainly the United States Secret Service doesn't agree with that. Uh, you see, our security is proactive. And I... I, I I really want to encourage you. We're not sitting back waiting to respond. We're proactive. If we see it, if that person's strange, it doesn't look right. We're going to avoid it. We're going to make it not happen. We're not going to sit back, wait for him to walk over, wait for him to attack us and then go, oh, okay, that's a good day. So if we can get that mindset, you know, head on a swivel was one term. And, and I really love that because uh, when you think about you know, kind of across our country, some of the challenges, many of those challenges involve, you know, crowds of people attacking or robbing. Um, and, y y you know, you don't want to be a part of that, you know. We I don't want to have to deal with multiple attackers. That's not a good day. I would much rather see them and then navigate away from them and avoid the whole thing. But when we're called upon to act, you need to have the confidence, the training, and the skill uh, to respond because a lot will happen in your mind and body. That's kind of what we train companies and organizations. You know, the, the tie between the mind and body response in a crisis. So I know this is probably a over... <laughs> <laughs> rehearsal of a lot of things that I've talked about, but I really, really appreciate you all. Appreciate your support. Um, Matt, it's an honor to, to team with you. Matt and I are doing some things together. Uh, as you know, for, for if you don't, Matt has uh, his channel and he actually trains, you know, self-defense on the channel itself. And so I would say to you, I don't care how old, how young, if you've not had any hands-on self-defense training, you need it. Let me say this. If you've not had, if you have a firearm and you don't have good training, I'm not talking about going to a range. You know, I've been training firearms for about 40 years. And I jokingly say when I'm training so far, a paper target hasn't shot back at me. And I will guarantee you that under the stress of the moment, you're going to need skills that only come through training the right way, not just stoically on a range, but some other training. So um, Matt's channel, um, if you just Google Matt Paskin, Paskinilli, uh, P-A-S-Q-U-I-N-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I. he's on YouTube um, and he has a uh, an ongoing um, class uh, training on YouTube. And, and really it's kind of cool because, you know, he trains older people as well, how to use weapons. They may have canes and, and things they may have. And, and let me just say this, if, if you're in a place in your life where you're like, I can't do it, I'm too old. You're right. You can't. But if you say, Oh, Oh, contrary, I can, I can make a difference. I can have some skill you're right there too. So it's all about how prepared are we? Who's willing to step up to the plate and to say, yeah, you know, so what? I'm 75 years old. I'm not what I you, uh, can't do what I used to do, but I can still, I can still change a day. Matt and I were laughing. I think uh, not too long ago, was a young man made a big mistake. And I think he was a 77 year old guy. And, um, 
he attacked uh, or he was attacked by a young man. But what the young man didn't know is that 77 year old guy was a boxer and he put it on. him. <laughs> and I thought, you know, it goes to show you that if if we're willing to to do what we can do and, and to train and to be prepared, that we can make a difference, not just for ourselves, but for others. Um, don't like guns, but I, I get it. You know, seriously considering taking classes, we have open carry and it's quite scary seeing weapons uh, every day in the store. My fear is not to own, but an opportunity is taking it. And, and let me just say this. That's a really good point. I get questioned a lot about open carry, my thoughts on it. Um, let me just tell you Tim's philosophy. I'm not going to condemn those that do. My philosophy, when I was a uniformed police officer, I hated I hated walking around in a uniform because that projected who I was. And it meant that if you were targeting me, you could attack me in ways that maybe I couldn't always see coming. So when it comes to firearms, I always recommend, and it's my practice, that you carry that weapon concealed in a way that you train with it. So you're, you're, you're carrying it concealed and you're training with it from that concealed position. One of the problems is when you go to ranges, sometimes they won't let you draw from a holster. Go uh, pay for the training that you need to where you can practice those draws. You can practice moving. You can practice doing all the things that you're going to need to do in, in a real, um, um, situation. And, um, I'm sorry, I missed it with Scott and Scott, I apologize, brother. I'm looking for you here. Um, Paul Harvey, good day. Um, the right to self-defense is from God. I totally agree, Matt. Uh, Weapon retention training is so important. Um, Florida Hiker Dry Fire is, I, I think, you know, I think some of you guys know we have some of the best of the best. We have three full-time professional trainers. They train agents um, at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. One of them comes from a Delta background. And I was, I, I was amazed. I was training with them and I said, you know, said, Mike, how did, I mean, how did you get so good? How, how come you guys are so good with firearms? And he said, we dry fire all the time. Um, I, I have a dry fire tool that I, it, it does, it's not a real weapon. It's a, it's called a cert gun. And I try to, you know, have it in my hand all the time. It does not fire. It's safe for kids. It, it has the same trigger pull uh, or press as, as a real firearm. But I'm always, always of the mindset that if you don't train whatever it is, self-defense, if you're not at the gym, if you're not training with your firearm, then when you need it, all of those repetition skills that you need may or may not be available. So, um, hoping and praying that you are thinking about what would I do if someone tried to take my gun? And that's my problem with open carry. If uh, you're open carrying and somebody wants to take that gun and you don't have training and retention, uh, it's going to be a bad day because now think about it. That gun you were proud to display is now in the hands of somebody that's evil and that may use it to take your life or others. That's why I'm not a big big fan of open carry doesn't make me feel good when I see folks walking around with weapons. And I know that may be offensive to some, um, but you know, it kind of is what it is. So that that's a bridge you have to uh, have to have to cross. And, you know, I was talking with my buddy Chuck Holton last night and uh, he's in Armenia and uh, you know, he's been in Israel and uh, I, trying to work some things out to get over there and join him so far. It hadn't worked out, but one of the things he said really struck me. He said, you know, Tim, I feel safer over here than I do in the U S I want you to think about that. That's the direction that our nation is going slowly. So again, no fear mongering, no doom and gloom. This is just pure wisdom. We're going to be prepared. We're going to be the, the, 
the type of people that prepare not just for us, not just for our families, but for others. Think of how many of your neighbors and innocent people, you're in the st- you're, you're walking down the street and something happens, but you're prepared. I am so sick. It drives me insane. I try not to get angry. Something happens and people are pulling out their cameras. They're taking videos. Really? Oh my goodness. What's happened? 20 years ago, that person would have been getting a uh, severe greeting from a bunch of people who were not going to let an innocent person, especially a, a woman, be beaten. And so that's kind of where we're going, folks. And that's where all of the things we talked about on the channel, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really important. And again, we can talk about it all day long, but I'm just going to ask you the hard question. What are you doing? Or first off, what can you do? Whatever your situation, what can you do? And then number two, are you willing to do it starting today, tomorrow? You know, I was recently training an organization and um, uh, one lady came up to me, an older lady, and she said, you know, there's not much I can do in terms of fitness. And I said, well, can you walk? (laughs) She said, yeah. I said, well, then do it. Go out and walk. There's all kinds of research now where if you just go out and do a, a mile walk a day, it settles your heart rate. It it energizes your um, your brain. They say for it is the single uh, best thing you can do for brain health to walk an hour a day. Now, an hour is more than a mile. But I find when I go out and I do that, I clear my brain. It, it resets things and uh, things are great. Um, but you've considered... Uh, Okay, good good question from SC Grandma. You've considered a taser, and um, I, I would I would say to you this, and, and Matt and I both agree, uh, a taser can be a good weapon. Um, it, it it is a proximity weapon, meaning that the person would have to be pretty close to you, and you would have to be able to maintain you know stability while firing it because it can miss too. Um, similar to pepper spray. And so here's what I would say to you. If you decided to get a, a taser, then just take it and practice with it. Go out and practice over and over and over again. Um, I, I, I think a taser can be an effective weapon. I need to tell you that, uh, in my career, I've shot people with tasers and because of drugs it it didn't necessarily affect them didn't bring the desired result so uh it is a choice though and it's better than nothing and um you know somebody asked me you know what's your primary defense and obviously i you know I had some training but um the thing i love most is i have a 120 pound greeter uh, he's a german shepherd and and he's going to let me know when we have a problem because that will buy me time and if you think about time um, that enables you to to call 911 that enables you to get your defensive plan in place hopefully call somebody else by the way folks now is the time to know your neighbors know your neighbors the police may be a ways away know your neighbors Home defense is a is an important thing now, and it's best done in groups. If if you know neighbors on either side, and you've got cell phones, and you're like, "Hey, it looks like somebody's outside," you're doing everybody a favor. It's time for communities to start acting like uh, communities again. And quite frankly, um, we used to do that. We used to know all our neighbors, but things have changed. Um, if you're more remote, make sure you know your closest neighbors. Um, because you, you may need them, you know, maybe a medical emergency, it may be a tornado, it may be, you know, it's much easier to want to come and help and love someone that you know. And, uh, I, I believe that's kind of what life's about anyway. Um, home defense wasp spray to the eyes. Um, you know, I've heard that before. Um, I recently talked to a guy about what wasp spray actually does. Um, it can cause um, some limited visibility restrictions. But if I was going to do that, I'd much rather have uh, something like bear spray or pepper spray um, because you could you can spray it out at distance. Remember, uh, weapons that um, 
are, are distant weapons, um, meaning that you have to be out and away are optimal because those are weapons like a wep- like a firearm. Um, they do make non, there's, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but there's a non-lethal pistol that you can shoot now. And apparently, you know, it has the impact of, uh, of, of around, but it doesn't hurt and or kill. And, uh, again, like, like Matt said, I've been on many, many, many scenes where somebody sp- <laughs> sprayed the pepper spray and it wind, whatever it ended up affecting, um, me. So, um, I, I, I would think, um, that would be something you, you definitely want to train with and you want to train with downwind and you want to have some, uh, dove soap, stuff to get your uh uh eyes or baby shampoo not duff uh to get your eyes clean um but yeah Ber- burna yeah there's a burna pistol that you can buy now and it's non-lethal um but again remember folks if you're not training with stuff whatever it is if you're not picking it up training with it there's a reason uh why i have you know this tool right here because I need to be practicing, um, you know, coming out, getting that weapon on target, practicing that trigger press, because those repetitions under pressure become infinitely harder. Uh, You're going to be going through a lot of neurological, physical, and emotional things in a real crisis. So we want to prepare for that. Uh, Most important thing, you cannot panic. You have to have a mindset did you know that the, the there's now research that backs it up that in a crisis, the first words that you speak actually either regulate your brain or cause panic. In other words, if you begin to scream, we're going to die, it's act activating the panic mode in your brain of fight, flight, or freeze and really uh, causing challenges. But if your words are positive, we're going to be okay. Let's go. You're actually, and, and the, the research is amazing. Um, Chris Hemsworth did, did this um, on a, on a series on, I think it was um, Disney channel, but if it, uh, about overcoming fear and that's one of the, the things that came out of, of that research. So that would be worth, worth watching. Um, I feel uh, I ride a bike and try to get to know all my neighbors. Love it. Uh, I feel like it, it, everyone knows me and is friendly. Um, and that's great. Well, folks, this is, uh, I just wanted to jump on and, and talk tonight. I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I, I, I really do believe um, we're going to continue to do more of these. And here's what I would say to you. If, if you have questions uh, about security, about your safety, about, hey, where should we go? Feel free to, you know, drop them on the channel. Um, my channel's at Lionheart Skills. Um, Matt, Matt has his channel as well. If, if you go to YouTube and, and you type in his name, um, you're going to find some really good information. And most importantly, going back to what Paul Harvey said, uh, l- let's be the people that aren't shocked by all this stuff. Let's be the people that are wise and prepared and committed. And let's make a difference. You know, life's short, folks. I know you know this. <laughs> it was yesterday we were all, you know, teenagers and here we are. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I, I really do appreciate you jumping on a live stream. I know there are many, many more that uh, are going to look at it later. So um, I appreciate you, your time and I hope and pray that you stay safe and we'll see you next time. Take care.